What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barf Life. Today we are getting to a video that we've gotten a ton of requests for and we haven't really been able to get to. Today we are tackling Basic Cocktail Syrups Volume 2. Well, the syrups that we're gonna be covering in this video are Rich Simple Syrup, Cinnamon Syrup, Cream of Coconut, and Grenadine. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. Who needs taxidermy ducks when you have four live ones running around the yard? Let's get into making the syrups. So the very first syrup that we're going to be making today is two to one simple syrup or rich simple. And there is quite a lot to be said about this syrup, even though it is just a two to one mixture of sugar to water. That it is. But today what we're going to be doing is a little bit different than what I've taught in the past. We're going to be doing what's called a cold processed syrup. A cold process syrup is where you do not put it on the stove at all. You just add the ingredients in a jar and you shake it. Now, there's a couple of very, very, very good benefits to doing this. And then there's a couple of very, very bad drawbacks to it as well. So the benefits of this is that you're not adding heat. When you add heat to your syrup, if you, by, per chance, start to simmer it or boil it, all of those little bubbles start to evaporate the water inside the syrup and it gets richer and richer. When you do a true one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water, you have what's called 50 degrees bricks. And that is a, a refractometer measurement, which measures the sweetness of things. So making a cold process syrup is really, really simple. All we need is a bottle, a funnel, sugar, and we're gonna use this lovely crew bottle that we got recently. And then we're going to use one cup or 250 grams of sugar. And then we're going to do half a cup or 125 grams of water. And we're just going to cap it off like this and give it a nice shake. Now, this is not going to dissolve right away. So if you need something a little bit faster, then just do all of these same steps, but put it into a blender and blend it. And then you can put it in a bottle and it will uh, dissolve much quicker. So there you have two to one simple syrup or rich simple. So a lot of you guys are gonna be asking me like, why even make rich simple syrup? And uh, there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, uh, you can use it in teaspoons. You can basically cut the amount in cocktails where you want a little bit of sweetness to balance out some other flavors. For instance, like if you have a sweeter juice in there, like if you have lemon and then you have uh, orange or you have uh, pineapple, you have something with a little bit more sugar in it. Adding a teaspoon can just add to the richness of it. Also, it has a richer mouthfeel, which a lot of people like. So there are some bars that actually, and just some people in general, that prefer to have uh, the simple syrup in a two to one ratio as their main syrup. I like to do a one to one ratio because I like my drinks to be a little bit more tart. But if you bend to the sweeter side, then you might wanna have a two to one simple syrup. Also, two to one simple syrup lasts a long time. It lasts a lot longer than one to one simple. One to one simple will last two to three weeks in your refrigerator before it starts to go off and grow fuzzies inside of it. But because there's so much sugar inside a uh, two to one simple syrup, it will last for six months. The only drawback to that is that it tends to crystallize, but a very good fix for having it crystallize is you can just heat the bottle up in some warm water and melt the crystals and then you have your syrup back. So the next syrup that we're doing today is cinnamon simple syrup. And I fought with myself a little bit about whether or not to include this in basic bar syrups. But if you're making any tiki drinks, you're gonna be going through a lot of cinnamon syrup. It's called for in a lot of different drinks in that vein. And not to mention the fact that it's just plain wonderful and it's simple to make. So I think that that kind of fits it into the basic syrup category. There is, although it's very simple to make, there's just a few things that you need to know about it. A lot of bars will make a uh, cinnamon simple as a two to one rich, simple syrup, and then add their cinnamon into that. Sometimes they're putting salt in there. Sometimes they're putting uh, a little bit of vanilla extract in there. Not sure why. I don't do any of that stuff. I actually make a one-to-one -one simple syrup. And the reason why I followed this up from the last one is because the last one we did a cold press syrup. Right now, we're actually gonna apply heat. And the reason why is I like my cinnamon syrup to be a little richer than one-to-one -one simple, but I feel that two-to-one rich syrup is just too sugary and too sweet. So what I like to do is I like to add the simple syrup into a pot and then bring it to a simmer. And then we're actually evaporating some sugar out there and we're making it a little bit richer, but not too rich. Really simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add one cup or 250 grams of water and then one cup or 250 grams of sugar into a pot. And we're gonna apply heat and then we're gonna let this simmer for a little bit. The other thing that you guys are gonna need is uh, some Ceylon cinnamon sticks. I like that particular variety of cinnamon the best. I think it gives the most 
cinnamony kind of flavor, if that makes sense. So here I have three to four sticks. I did, I did three sticks, but you can do four sticks depending on how cinnamony you want your syrup. And then I just crush them up like this, kind of lightly crush them up. You can crush them up a little bit more if you want. And we're gonna be adding this into the syrup. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to whisk the sugar and just help it combine as it heats. Once the sugar is starting to dissolve, we're gonna want to add in our cinnamon pieces and get it all wet with syrup. And then we're gonna bring it to a boil. So now as soon as it starts to boil, we're just gonna take it off the heat and then we're gonna put it into a bottle. If you're pouring into glass, make sure you're pouring into a borosilicate or Pyrex glass. If you pour really hot boiling syrup into a glass, it's going to crack and break. And then we're just going to let this sit for 12 hours. So now we've got our syrup, it's been 12 hours. Uh, you see that the simple syrup has turned kind of a little ambery color. We're gonna take any receptacle you want. I'll just use this measuring cup and then we're gonna take a nut milk bag and we're gonna line the measuring cup with it. You can use a fine strainer for this, although I will say that fine strainers don't get all the little pieces of cinnamon out and I don't like to have little pieces in my syrup. So I like to do a nut milk bag. They're pretty cheap, you can get them on Amazon. There's a link below for you guys if you'd like it. Uh, if not, if you have um, like a double layer of cheesecloth will work or you can do a chinois, that's another thing that will work. And then what we're gonna just do is we're just gonna pour this syrup through the bag like so. And then we're just gonna squeeze it, get rid of the cinnamon, make sure your hands are clean. Every last little bit of cinnamon out. And there you have your cinnamon simple syrup. The longer you keep your cinnamon inside the bottle, the deeper your infusion is gonna be. And I, I just wanna let kind of warn you guys that you can let it sit there. You can let it sit there for a while, but uh, I like the 12 hour period. After that, to me, it tends to get a little bit too cinnamony and then that can really kind of throw your cocktails off balance. You want it to be cinnamony, but not too much. You don't want it to taste like big red gum, which if you infuse it for too long, it can get that way. So there it is guys, cinnamon simple syrup. So the next syrup that we got going on is what I like to call lazy grenadine. No basics syrups video would be complete without grenadine. And we did grenadine on this channel once before a couple of years ago. And we, that one was the non-lazy grenadine. That one was like how to take pomegranates and make grenadine from fresh pomegranates and then also make fresh pomegranate molasses all from the fruit. So today we're gonna simplify this into like a three-step process. Really, really simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some 100% pomegranate juice with no added sugars. We're just gonna take four cups or one kilo of pomegranate juice and add it to a pot. And then we're gonna take three cups or 750 grams of sugar and we're gonna add that to the pot too. We're gonna turn this on to low heat. We're gonna take a whisk. We're gonna start whisking our sugar in very lightly because I'm using a small pot and a lot of liquid. Unlike our cinnamon syrup, we do not want this to boil or simmer at all. We don't want to evaporate any water out of it. So you need to make sure that it never starts to bubble. Once the sugar is relatively dissolved, we're gonna take six ounces or 245 grams of pomegranate molasses and we're gonna add that in as well. So that's just gonna give this a nice, rich pomegranate flavor. Oh, see, I'm oh, spilling. You have a spout and I'm spilling. Ah, still spilled. All right, so there you have it. Lazy grenadine. So the very last syrup we're going to be doing today, we're gonna to be making cream of coconut. Now, you notice that I didn't say coconut cream, even though I've been stubbornly calling it coconut cream, but I did a little bit of research and this is what I found. There's coconut cream on the market and there's coconut milk on the market. And basically the difference between coconut milk and coconut cream are, that coconut milk is a one-to-one -one ratio of shredded coconut and water. And coconut cream is a ratio of four cups of shredded coconut to one cup water. So you just have a richer, thicker coconut for the coconut cream. That being said, coconut cream can be sweetened, but it's not usually sweetened with a lot of sugar. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna standardize the coconut cream, cream of coconut right now. If I continue to call it coconut cream, that would just be me being bullheaded. So from now on, anytime we use anything that I was calling coconut cream, it's going to be now called cream of coconut. And if we use coconut syrup, which is another term that I used for the same thing, we're actually gonna be using what coconut syrup actually is, which is simple syrup with a little bit of coconut kind of make, like kind of macerated into it or whatever. Uh, it's a completely different thing. In the past, everything that I used, whether I called it cream of coconut, Coconut cream or coconut syrup has been the same thing that we're making today, but from this day forward, it is gonna be called cream of coconut on this channel. Gotcha, capiche?
All right, so today what we're making is a very good representation of Coco Lopez. So Coco Lopez is, co is cream of coconut. Uh, I keep on wanting to call it coconut cream too, because I'm so used to it. But it's cream of coconut. It's used in a lot of tiki drinks. Uh, a lot of you guys can't get your hands on Coco Lopez, so we make kind of a house-made version. I have gone through a lot of different recipes from the Smuggler's Cove version to the Varnish version. Uh, there's a really good version on Art of Drink, uh, which is a blog that we that I found that has a really good version on it. This one is just kind of like a bastardization of all of those versions after I was testing the cream of coconut that I wanted to make. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 400 mils or just like one can of coconut milk. I like to use the Thai Village coconut milk. That's my favorite one. Just gonna add that in there like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take, I pre-portioned this out. It's 300 grams of two to one simple syrup. And we're gonna add that in as well, like so. And then we're just gonna do one healthy pinch of sea salt. I'm using a Malden sea salt, but any good sea salt will do. And then we're gonna take a whisk and we're just gonna whisk this all together until the solids are completely broken up, like so. And it's nice and silky. And then we're just going to add our cream of coconut in there. There it is. Leandro's famous house-made cream. That's not true. I actually used a bunch of different recipes and sort of strung them together into something that I really like. So it's my version of other people's recipes. But there it is, the cream of coconut. Boom! You guys asked for cocktail syrups and Big Papa delivered. So now when you guys make your cocktail syrups, you will know that you will consistently get the same cocktails tasting that we do on the show. And hopefully that helps you out. Uh, I also behoove you guys to go out and explore tweak the recipes because that's what this is all about. It doesn't matter what's in the glass as long as what it is, is what you like. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, YouTube memberships, and our website, theeducatedbarfly.com, where we do articles, we do our merch there, and we have a virtual bottle program where you can buy a bottle and be part of the action. Uh, that is a big, big spiel right now. But uh, I guess I'll just see you on another time. I'm going to cut it there.